Stand by for crime. Hi. I'm Chuck Morgan, newscaster on radio station KLP here in Los Angeles. You know, corruption in government is something that will probably always be with us. Let's face it, we have our share, I guess, just like every other large American city. There are a few of us who are in a position to do something about it. So we keep trying, with varying degrees of success and failure. There are other forms of corruption, too. In sports, for example, like that basketball business a while ago, and boxing. That's a story I'd like to tell you. You've heard of Lefty Luke Larson and K.O. McCready, light heavyweights, both of them. Well, last week, they were scheduled for a ten-rounder in the Starlight Stadium. It was supposed to be a grudge fight, but I had pretty good information that the scrap was fixed, with Lefty set up to kiss the canvas. I tried for a week to get my hands on something concrete that I could use without a libel suit being filed and got no place. Well, on the night of the fight, I got back to my office just before a 7 o'clock broadcast and found my blonde secretary, Carol Curtis, knocking herself out over something she'd been reading. <laughs> all right, all right. What have you been doing? Oh. Reading the Los Angeles weather reports or something? Oh, Chuck, honestly, this is the funniest thing I've ever read. <laughs> Some of your own dialogue, I'll bet. No. Look, this letter was addressed to the question and, and answer department and got to a mail by mistake. Yeah, who's it from? <laughs> oh, that's unimportant. Listen, dear sir, I have a small ranch in the San Fernando Valley. For several months, I have been troubled by my neighbor's chickens wandering into my backyard and laying their eggs in my garden. This morning, there wasn't a single solitary egg there, and I want to know what I can do about it. <laughs> Well, don't you think it's funny? Yeah, I'm dying. Now, look. Well, oh, you don't get it, Chucky boy. This woman says she's being troubled. Get that troubled uh. by these hens laying their eggs in her yard and all. Yes, yes, I get it, I get it. Now she's mad because they've stopped. <laughs> oh, you do get it. Some people's sense of humor. Did the ducats come in? What ducats? The ducats to tonight's fights, of course. Oh, yes, they're here. And you don't have to bite my head off. Oh, hey, who's going to use the other one? Other what? Where's that lighter fluid? Uh, the ticket. There are two. Oh, a friend of mine. Oh, here it is. I see. You know, Glamorpus, I'm as convinced that tonight's fight is fixed as I am that the sun will rise tomorrow. It burns me up because there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, this friend... The that fight you... game's always been pretty clean. It's a lousy shame the way a gambling syndicate can move in and put the fix on. Mm, maybe your friend knows the answer. Uh, I don't think so. Glamorpus, it's almost time to go on the air. Oh, listen, answer the phone, will you? Chuck Morgan's office. Oh, hello, Bill. Yes, he's here. Who is it, Bill Max? Yes. He sounds excited. Hello, Bill. How are things? What? No kidding. Half hour ago, huh? Yeah, I can get it on the show, but talk fast. There's only about about three minutes to airtime. Take this down, Glamorpus. Okay. Lefty Luke Larson, contender for the light heavyweight championship of the world was found murdered in his apartment at 720 Citizen Street this evening. Well, I gave the local fight fans quite a shock with the story of Lefty Larson's murder in my 7 o'clock broadcast. But that was nothing to what was coming. At 7.15, I left the studio and drove out to 720 Citizen Street. It was a small apartment house located up against the hills in the Las Vegas district. Two cops were keeping a crowd of curious people moving. Both of them I knew, so they let me inside. Larson's apartment was on the ground floor rear. Tom Brady, the medical examiner, was just leaving as I entered. Bill Meggs was inside, another cop, and a red-headed girl. She was sitting in a corner, staring dazedly at the floor. Her eyes were red, and it was obvious that she'd been crying. How's it look, Bill? Uh, not good, Chuck. The guy was murdered, all right. Tom says it was most likely cyanide poisoning, although he can't tell for sure until he performs an autopsy. You got a cold, Bill? Yeah, I'm just getting over it. Oh, that's too bad. What makes you so sure it was murder? It had to be. Come over here. Right. See that uh, damp ring on this bedside table? Yeah, and glass containing some sort of liquid must have been there not long ago. That's right. 
Well, the glass is missing. If Lefty had committed suicide, it'd still be there. Unless someone else took it away. It's very likely that someone would come in and take that glass away with Lefty's dead body lying there in the bed without doing something about it. Unless it was the murderer himself. Unless it was the murderer himself. Which, of course, it was. I figure it's all right. What's your idea what happened, Bill? Well, we've checked around and learned that Larson left Mosley's gym around 4.30. Said he's going home to pick up his good luck piece and maybe lie down for an hour or so before the fight. Which I guess is what he did. I figure he poured himself a glass of milk, sat on the edge of the bed, drank it, and then lay down. Yeah. Well, couldn't he have carried the glass back to the kitchen? Well, he could have. But he wouldn't have had time to wash it and put it away. Not with that poison in him. Yeah, you're right. And he was found right here on the bed. Who found him? That girl over there. Her name's Lil Framingham. They are... Well, they were engaged. She says she called him here on the phone about 5.15. Told him she'd pick him up and drive him to the stadium at 6.30. When she got here, she found him dead. I see. What was the good luck piece you mentioned a minute ago? A set of rattles from a rattlesnake. We found them in his pocket. Oh, uh, by the way, Chuck, I'd appreciate your giving me a hand in this. You know, I never was much of a fight fan. Don't know many of the people mixed up in it. You have to in your work. Yeah, yeah sure. I'll be glad to do anything I can. I don't suppose you came up with any fingerprints? No. Nope. Everything wiped clean. <laughs> Another one of those, huh? You mind if I talk to the girl? If she'll talk, she's pretty upset. Thanks. Hello, Lil. I loved him. We were going to be married. I loved him. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a tough break. But now we've got to see if we can't find the man who did this thing. Can you think of anyone who might have wanted Lefty out of the way, Lil? I loved him. We were going to be married. Did he have any enemies? Anyone who, who hated him? Hate? Yeah. Anyone hate Lefty? Nobody hated Lefty. He was the swellest guy who ever lived. I loved him. Okay, Lou. I'll ask Lieutenant Meggs to have someone take you home. We can talk again later. Well, how'd you make out? She's in a bad state of shock, Bill. You better get her home. I intend to. Only kept her here this long so you could talk to her. Thanks. You, uh, sometimes have a way with females. Sometimes. Uh, by the way, where's Carl? Back of the studio, sweating over typewriter. Didn't want to come, huh? Yeah, she wanted to. But I have to throw my weight around once in a while and show her who's boss. Ha! What do you mean, ha? Nothing. Only kidding. Well, you got any ideas? Yeah, one or two. I'll tell you what. I'll take a run down to Mosley's now. I'll talk to some of the boys. Let you know if I pick up anything. <laughs> changed my mind about going down to Mosley's and went back to the studio instead. I remembered that out in San Fernando Valley, an old-time boxer named Babe Starkey, long since retired, had bought a small ranch and was operating it for the few bucks he needed in his old age. Most of the boxers, especially the young ones who came to town, found time to go out to Babe's and swap yarns with him. Babe knew more about fights and fighters than anyone. It occurred to me that he might have the answer to a few questions I wanted to ask. So the next morning, I picked up Carol around 9 o'clock, and we headed over Coinga Pass into the valley. By the way, what kind of a ranch is it that this babe stocky runs? Oh, didn't I tell you? No. It's a snake ranch. A what? A snake ranch. Didn't you ever hear of a snake ranch? Oh, I've heard of every other kind out here in Southern California. Orange ranches and chicken ranches and cucumber ranches and avocado ranches. But never a snake ranch. What kind of snakes does he raise? Rattlesnakes. Rattle... Oh, Chuck, Morgan, you stop this car at once and let me out. Oh, come now, take it easy. Glamour post. Chucky boy won't let the nasty old snakes do anything. Did you say something, Glamour post? No. Well, why not? You're usually talking. I was thinking. With what? I, I mean, what about? I was thinking what a shame it is that you and your friend couldn't go to the fights last night. Yeah, it was. Oh, oh, here we are. I remember those two gateposts well. Chuck, this uh, friend... Turn into you... the drive. Hey, hey, there's Babe. Hello, Babe. How are you? Hey, Chuck Morgan. Yeah. How are you, boy? Stepped down from your saddle, son, and squatted in the shade a bit. <laughs> hey, who's that with you? Ah, uh, you've heard of me much of my secretary, Carol Curtis. I never met the young lady, but I'm sure glad to do it now. Hey, she's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Babe. You're pretty, too. Well, now, that's plumb decent of you to say that, ma'am. <laughs> Come on, get out. Get out of there. 
Where did you latch on to that Western talk, babe? Well, no, it's like this, Chuck, my boy. I figured as long as I turned rancher, I better talk like one. <laughs> Here, yeah. Uh, just you sit right down there in the shade of the sycamore tree, Miss Curtis. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> My, you are pretty. Well, thank you again. How's the rattlesnake business, babe? Well, it's like this. I raise them and kill them and skin them and pack the meat in cans and sell the hides. Make a few bucks here and a few there. Not much, but it's kind of fun. Dangerous, too. Dang critters like to kill you if they get a hold with their fangs. How about me showing you around the place? Got some powerful Bill Sidewinder. No, thanks. <laughs> well, we've only got a few minutes, babe. You heard about Lefty Larson, I suppose. I sure did. What a shame. Yeah. Now, who do you suppose the one of murder Lefty? He was a good boy. It's only a month ago he was out here. Spent the day with me. I'd give him some rattles for a lucky piece. Tell me, babe, did Lefty seem to be bothered about anything? Uh, bothered? Yeah, anything seemed to be troubling him. Was he happy? Did he feel confident about winning last night's fight? Uh, well, no, Chuck... Or had the gambling syndicate put the finger on him? Gambling? Uh, hey, that, that's pretty dangerous talk, Chuck. You better be careful. So they've got you scared, too, huh? Well, how's this for a guess, babe? Lefty came out here and told you about the syndicate trying to get him to throw the fight. He asked your advice because he respected you. And you told him to go ahead and throw the fight. That's true, isn't it? Well, no, no, Chuck. Uh, that ain't it at all. That ain't the way it happened. Uh, well, I'm an old man, Chuck. This little acre's all I got. I can't afford to lose it. They, yeah, they got here while Lefty and I were still talking. They said unless I kept my mouth shut, they'd... Well, they... Yeah, yeah, okay, babe. Okay. That's all I wanted to know. You won't tell them, Chuck, huh? You won't tell them... Not a word, me. babe. I'll keep your name out of it entirely. Now, quit worrying, will you? All right, Chuck. Thanks. Come on, Glamour, let's let go. Chuck, did you ever talk to him like that? He's so harmless and sweet. Yeah. Harmless and sweet. Get into the car, Glamopus. Unless I miss my guess, I'll be able to announce the identity of the murderer of Lefty Larson on my 7 o'clock broadcast tonight. studio, I'd begun to wonder if I hadn't been a bit hasty in making the 7 o'clock broadcast a deadline. There was a lot to be done during the next few hours. But first, I wanted to have a talk with my boss, Pappy Mansfield, owner of KOP. Pappy listened patiently while I explained what I had in mind. It's a good idea, Chuck, and it might work, but you can't do it. Good for you, Pappy. That's exactly what I told him. If he thinks he can... Glam the puss. What? Drop dead. What do you mean I can't do it, Pappy? If my guess is right, we'll have one of the biggest stories of the year. Yes, and if your guess isn't correct, I'll be minus one good newscaster. Nope, not a chance. All right, Pappy, I'll make a deal with you. It's now 2 o'clock. I'll start for Mike Mosley's gym right now. If I'm not back by 4, you get hold of Bill Meggs and come looking for me. Well, why don't we get hold of Bill Meggs right now and go down there with you? For obvious reasons. Name three. How about it, Pappy? Well, I don't know. Good, it's a deal. You stay here, Glamopus, and wait for the phone to ring. When it does, it'll be me with the solution to the mystery of the boxing champ murder. Mike Mosley's gym was located in a loft over a pool hall on Santa Monica Boulevard. I went up a flight of outside stairs and found the door at the top unlocked. I went in. But the big cavern-like room was deserted, which was unusual. Most any day, you could find a half a dozen more pugs working out here. There are trainers and handlers all over the place. Fresh air had been a stranger in the room for quite a while. The place stank of stale tobacco smoke and sweat and rosin. I walked around the ring that was set up in the middle of the room and found the door that led to Mike's private office. I knocked, but there wasn't any reply. Then I heard a sound behind me and turned to find Mike standing there. Behind Mike were a couple of beat-up-looking kids wearing trunks and boxing gloves. Hello, Morgan. What's on your mind? Hiya, Mike. Your place looks deserted. What's that for, out of respect for a dead pal? It could be. But I got another reason for shutting up shop, too. Huh? Yeah. I've been expecting a visitor. Yeah? Who's 
Who's that? You. No kidding. Now, why would you be expecting me, Mike? Well, you got a habit of getting ideas, Morgan, and there's some of us in a fight game that don't like them. Such as the fact that you've let the gambling syndicate move into L.A., and you bought yourself a couple of new cars and a place at Malibu within the past six months? Ideas like that, Mike? Yeah, yeah, ideas like that. Ideas that you can't prove and never will be able to. So why don't you get an idea to talk about the Iowa State picnic on your show tonight? Mm, be a cleaner story than the one I'm going to broadcast. Yeah? Oh, while you're here, Morgan, I want to introduce you to a couple of new boys I'm bringing along. Uh, Buck, come over here. Buck, this here's Mr. Chuck Morgan. He's a newscaster on one of the big radio stations in town. Ah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, he's a lot of other things, too, but I'm too polite to mention him. Now, Buck, I want you to show Mr. Morgan that right hook you was practicing yesterday. Hey, Slim, hey, you stand over there. When I give the word, you demonstrate that left jab of yours. These are things Mr. Morgan likes to know about. Okay, Buck, let him have it. Now, just a minute. All right, hit him, Slim. Give it to him, boys. Maybe Mr. Morgan won't be so snoopy from now on. Give it to him. Don't let him fall down. Keep him on his feet. That a boy, Buck. Once more, Slim. When I came out of that one, I was in a cab heading down Santa Monica Boulevard. My face felt like a boiled beet. I put my hand up where my nose should have been. Oh. oh. Cabby. Cabby! Don't ask me nothing, mister. I ain't seen nothing. I ain't heard nothing. Just doing what I got paid for. Who paid you? All right. Where are you taking me? Any place you say, mister. So long as it don't cost more than two bucks. Okay. Take me to K.O.P. I could tell by the expression on the faces of the people I met when I walked into the K.O.P. building that Mike's boys had really done a job on me. Glamour Puss let out a yelp when I walked into the office. Oh, Chuck! Hi, Glamour Puss. Get me a drink of water, will you? Oh, Chuck! Oh, you poor boy. What happened? Were you in a fight? In a... No, no. I, I got this way sitting under a sun lamp. Get me a drink of water, will you? All right. Carol, uh... Well, who's this? Chuck! Hello, Pappy. What happened? Were you in a fight? Oh, no, not you two. Here's the water, Chuck. Thanks. And here's the first aid kit. No, 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 get and away And don't you dare tell me you're all right and don't need attention. Now, hold still. What happened, Chuck? Oh, some of... Uh, ouch! Now, will you take it easy, glamour puss? Oh, don't be a sissy. Some of Mike's boys worked me over. Why? I guess they don't like me. Uh, Oh. I hope this will teach you to take someone else's advice once in a while. If you had let Bill and Pappy go down there shut with up. you... It, I won't shut up. You're a newscaster, not a detective. Now, here, turn your head this way. Uh, obviously, he's uh, not a prize fighter either. Yeah? Well, let me tell you two something. I'm not bad at either one. You haven't seen those other two guys yet. And don't forget, it was I who figured out that fingerprint deal two weeks... Hey. Sit still. I Let me have that phone... What's got into you? Oh, it must be the effects of the sunlamp. I'll show you whether or not I'm a good detective. Police department. This is Chuck Morgan. Get me Bill Meggs. Just a minute. Hello, Chuck. What's on your mind? Listen, Bill. Did you tell me that you didn't find any fingerprints when you dusted that room where Lefty was murdered? Not a one. Why? Think hard, Bill. Weren't there any at all? No. Only my own on it. Hey, Chuck, that's it. You bet that's it, my friend. You got the address? Sure I have. Good. I'll meet you there in ten minutes. <laughs> got out of there fast, ignoring the protests of Carol and Pappy, and ten minutes later, I was pulling up in front of an apartment house on North Hobart. Bill Meggs was waiting for me in the doorway. Oh, what the heck happened to you? You been in a yeah, fight? Yeah, 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 I've been in a fight. Come on, let's go. The mailboxes gave us the number of the apartment we were looking for. It was on the second floor. We went up a flight of carpeted stairs and knocked on the door of 2A... Try it again. Yeah. Hello, Lil. Mind if we come in? Why, well, it's Lieutenant Meggs and Mr. Morgan. I know, of course not. Come on in. Hello, Morgan. My. Huh. Imagine finding you here. What's the matter, you Yeah, 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 yeah. You know Lieutenant Meggs, Mike? He's from headquarters. So? Mike and I are old pals. Oh, so you men know each other. Mr. Mosley's been so kind to me since Lefty passed on. 
Some of the boys at his gym took up a collection and gave me the money. When did this happen? Why, today, I guess. How much money was there? None of your business? Mike, that is... Mr. Mosley asked me not to tell. You can call him Mike, Lou. We understand. What do you mean by that crack? Well, I'll tell you, Mike. You've got your coat off and your tie loosened. That's rather informal when the girl only knows you well enough to call you Mr. Mosley. You're being rude. And you're being stupid, Lil. Seems to me you got over your grief pretty fast. Yesterday you were too stunned to talk. I don't like your manner at all, Lieutenant. I wish you'd leave. Oh, we're going to leave, all right. And you're coming with us. Why? Because you murdered Lefty Larson. I murdered Lefty? Oh, why, Lieutenant, you can't be serious. I'm serious, all right. You were in love with Lefty, Lil. You only pretended you were. Actually, you're in love with this two-bit chiseler, Mike Mosley. When Lefty wouldn't throw the fight and threaten to expose you, you murdered him. Mike's as much to blame as you. How do you like that? I'm as much to blame. I wasn't even near the joint. No. All you did was provide Lou with the poison and tell her what to do. Well, now, ain't that something? You can prove it, I suppose. We won't have to prove it. Lil's going to tell her. Lil's going... Oh, drop dead, Morgan. Lil ain't going to tell nothing to nobody. Like you said, she's in love with me. She does what I say. Okay, Lil, get your hat. Let's go. Wait a minute. Mike, are you going to let me take the rap for this? I don't worry, kid. I'll, I'll get you out of it. You're going to let them take me out of here without doing nothing to stop them? Take it easy, kid. Ain't I told you Why, I'd you get you cheap, out of it. Why, you cheap, two-time and jerk. You're in this as much as I am. It was you. Shut up. I won't. You gave me the poison. Shut up. I set her up. All right, Mosley, that does it. Keep your hands off me, copper. Shut up. Uh, 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 slash. That was when I sure owed. settled that one. Lou gave a full confession, which of course implicated Mike Mosley. We guessed pretty accurately as to how the thing had been worked out. It was just another one of those cases in which a murderer thought he'd covered his trail enough to be very sure of himself. Will they ever learn? Of course, I had a lot of explaining to do to a certain blonde secretary and a gentleman named Pappy Mansfield. Okay, genius. Gather around, Pappy. This is the moment that Chucky boy likes. The ham. <laughs> Glamour, Buzz. You're just mm -hmm. sore because you didn't figure this one out yourself, huh? All you? right, all right. Now, if you two have exchanged the usual number of insults to assure each other that you're really in love, suppose you give it to us, Chuck. Sure, Patty. It was really quite simple. Oh, you modest man, you. Go ahead and brag. For the moment, Glamour, Buzz, I'm going to ignore you and talk to Pappy. It was like this, Pappy. Lil said she called Lefty at his apartment and talked to him on the phone an hour before he was murdered. Yet Bill Meggs couldn't find any fingerprints except his own, which were on the phone. My guy. Lil had wiped everything clean of fingerprints, including the telephone. But Bill used the phone when he got there. Uh -huh. So both Bill's and Lefty's should have been on that receiver. Oh, my, my. And to think our Chucky figured it all out by himself. Oh, say, Pappy. Yeah, Chuck? Those tickets I had for the Larson McCready fight... They're sending me two others for the Aragon bout next week, so we won't miss out entirely. Oh, good. Chuck. Hmm? Huh? Was Pappy the friend who was going to use the other ticket? Sure, didn't I tell you? No, you didn't. No, I'm sorry. Chuck Morgan, I think you're dreadful. Why? You knew I thought you were going to take some other woman, and you let me think so... Glamour uh, What? You're pretty. Oh, Chuck, I think you're pretty, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 